Yeah, just uh, <clears throat> first of all, really grateful to the ADs, the presidents, chancellors, obviously, you know, Dennis Farrell at the Big West and, uh, and everyone who was a part of just making this a reality to even have a Big West conference and tournament. This is really special. Uh, it's unique in men's volleyball. And, uh, you know, to the coaches that we have the opportunity to work with and compete against all year just for their, I don't know, just willingness to come together and, and make this thing happen. Uh, there's nothing like Big West Volleyball and this tournament and this feel and, and being a conference like anywhere else. It's, uh, it's really special. So I think that's opening comment is just grateful to be here. Open up a question for the student athletes. like set one and two were relatively close compared to set three and then in set three you guys went on a six point run and from there you kind of took it uh what errors are you guys planning on eliminating and what do you think started to go very well for your team at that point in time yeah you know uh with the, how we play the game um we do try and manage our errors try and have as few as possible that's like the best case scenario but um we try and get the reception off of for the other team to have them pull it off the net and uh, by doing that I mean we have to be pretty aggressive with how we play the game so here and there there are some errors um, but I think we can rely on other parts of the game to to really uh, like reverse those errors or subtract them so like with blocking like if we get an error swinging we can rely on our block to um, stuff a ball and get a point and sort of zero that out for a game so I think with the errors, we, we are going to try and refine some things. It's, it's sort of weird, the first game of the Big West tournament, um, just trying to get into a groove, and you don't really know what to expect. But uh, now that we have that under our belt, I think we can just run with it. So, Yeah, I mean, I think we, <clears throat> even though the score was close, set one and two, I mean, for us on the, on the court, it just felt like we were doing our job, and we just calibrate to how they were playing. And uh, yeah, it was. I didn't even realize that it was that close or that far. Just we're playing our game, and I don't think there's anything to change in set one or two to have a bigger gap in the score. It's just we're just playing our game. Yeah. Oh, Carl, uh, you folks had two really tight matches in Honolulu, and you left uh, the second night winning. What do you folks want to do to be successful again against Hawaii tomorrow? Um, I think. When we play at our best, we're competing for every point. Um, splitting in Hawaii is an awesome, awesome thing that we achieved. Uh, Hawaii is a tough place to play, but it's also a great place to play uh, with all the fans. And um, I think going into tomorrow against Hawaii, we just got to play our game point by point um, and compete. That's the biggest thing. Aaron, Yeah, I think he said it. Compete, <clears throat> that's our big thing. Who we play doesn't even really matter because I mean, we're a pretty tight team, and if we compete and we all compete pretty hard, I think we're, we're going to be up there. And it's going to be close games, but if we're ready to compete, I think that'll make the difference. Because I think the skill is there. It all, it's going to come down to who's going to be able to compete better. Last question for student athletes. All right, channel. Uh, oh, good. Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so I didn't have the final uh, the final stats, but it looked like you were up near 20 kills, and you were at around. 10. Yeah, Carl had 17 kills. Yeah. Uh, Kubi had eight kills. Perfect. Scott had eight kills. Joel had nine. Yeah. Two. Austin had seven. Awesome. Um, so can you speak to that, and can you speak to playing in the Big West, which seems like it's the most competitive division for this year in volleyball? Um, with the stats, Dante does a great job balancing our offense. Um, of course, you're going to feed a hot hand. I think that's just something that you do in volleyball. Um, but I know that if you set someone else, they're going to do and they're going to do their job and get the job done well. So, um, with that, kills are kills, um, points are points. But uh, I think. Us as a team playing <coughs> together and winning sets is the biggest thing. Um, and then playing in the Big West, um, it's, it's awesome. I, I love playing at the highest possible uh, level. Um, 
of course, there's other conferences and they have very good teams in them and they, they compete hard, but this being the first year that uh, the Big West is um, a conference for men's volleyball, I think having that level the first year is a really awesome thing. So it's awesome to be a part of it. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, Dante did a great job and it's huge because when we're in good position to hit, it's easier to score. And I think he did a good job balancing between Joel, me, and him. He had a lot of ball, but he was he was hot, so he kept going at him. So they were focused on him. Then Dante came back to Joel and I, and I mean, we, we hit well. So yeah, he did a good job balancing out. And yeah, play, being in the playoffs, it's, it's huge. And I think <clears throat> every guy on our team loves to play in like big games and like playoff and stuff like this. So I think from now on, we're just going to keep getting better. All right, gentlemen, thank you. You're excused. And I'll open it up for questions for uh, Coach Nick. Hey, Coach, um, you always talk about um, you know, talking to players. They always talk about the importance of establishing identity and playing curve line uh, volleyball. Can you speak to the, like, what you've seen throughout the season and the growth of identity and also looking yeah, I guess what I should probably do first is define Irvine volleyball, right? <clears throat> That's hard. Uh, yeah, I think it just comes to leveraging our our given talents in any given year and making them work together as one unit. Uh, we've had some very different teams go on deep playoff runs, including you know several national championships over the last 10, 12 years. And uh, it always looks a little bit different. And so I think Irvine volleyball really is when we figure out what those strengths are and you know, allow guys to lead with them. And so everybody gets to be the tip of the spear at a different point during the match. Uh, and that's, that's big. So that is an identity that I think we're figuring out. I think we're, you know, we're still a young team. And we really, if you look at our lineup right now, we, we returned one starter from last year's squad. Uh, so there is some identity formation that's still going on with this team. It doesn't change the fact that I think we're a dangerous team for anybody to play. Uh, but I, I have enjoyed the process of watching these kids grow up together and, uh, and as a unit. Kind of right along those same lines. It seems like every passing week you guys have grown as a team and you've played better and better. Uh, do you think that you have some momentum going into this week, especially after uh, Long Beach's recent loss? Do you think that you guys have more of an advantage than you had the last time you played them? You know, I don't know. I, I don't think that our team requires momentum, which is really unique. Uh, I think in volleyball, you get caught up talking about momentum a lot. But I think the nice thing about our style of play is we can start and stop pretty quickly. Uh, Kubi mentioned the word calibrate, and that's kind of been, you know, it, it's been a real strength of ours. And it's, it's been something that's hurt us a little bit, too. We, we calibrate to the level of our opponents. And, you know, when somebody comes into our gym and you know, they're doing some stuff. I, I feel like we're always going to be a deuce game. So we're going to be as good at playing deuce games as anybody in the country because we've been in a lot of them this year. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's, that's an okay place to be. I mean, it's, it's been real valuable for us in terms of growing up and growing together. With the addition of the Big West of the conference, it, it changes the structure and that your season is shorter and you have more opportunities to go out of conference. Does that change how you prepare for the season? Well, scheduling is a different challenge now than it was, <laughs> just in terms of, you know, we, we used to have the, you know, the federation, really, the MPSF did a lot of the, the work for us because we would have 12 teams, and so you've got an automatic 22 matches pre-scheduled for you that you don't need to think about. They just show up on those weekends, and there's a little maneuvering that we needed to make, but pretty simple when you only have to schedule another six matches to get to your 28 permissible matches in a season. Well, now in the Big West, right, we've only got our 10 matches scheduled for us. So, you know, making up ground and, and scheduling on our own those other 18 is for sure a challenge. And you saw it in our schedules this year with the Big West teams when there were some weekends where we were just off. And I thought we rolled with it really well as coaches. Uh, we used those weekends for rest. We inserted things like alumni games. Uh, but in terms of, you know, we're all still getting our matches. I think everybody here in the Big West played somewhere between 24 and 28 matches this year. So we're obviously able to fill the schedules. Um, having the latitude is fun. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what the kind of financial restraints and constraints are on teams as we go forward, because it, it obviously can get expensive jumping around the country. But uh, you know, 
our ADs, the conference, the schools have been very supportive of the fact that, you know, we're taking pride in being the only men's volleyball conference. In fact, the only volleyball conference since we're offering sand, women's, and men's. Uh, and it's been neat to see the administrations get behind that and just continue to back us. Concerns about Hawaii? Hawaii. Uh, in what respect? I'm sorry. Uh, do you have any con specific concerns about Hawaii and Ma? I mean, you folks split two great matches. In oh, just in terms of the challenges they put? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, they're a good team. Um, no, no specific concerns. I mean, they they play the whole game, too, you know, and, and uh, I just, we've, we've had great matches with Hawaii over the year. I mean, over the years. I don't think there's anything really specific. Um, <laughs> No, I just think it'll be an exciting match. They're a fun team to play. They're a really fun team to play. Were you surprised about the results with the beach matches last week in Honolulu? Uh, not really. Um, I mean, I think, you know, it's, you know, you got two good teams. I think going to Hawaii and playing at Hawaii is one of the toughest things to do. Hawaii and BYU, everybody knows, are the two most fortified environments to play in in the, in the country and the two hardest places to, to go unscathed uh, when you go visit, you know, regardless of the year. Um, so, you know, I mean, I, I think you got two good teams playing in a tough place. It's a flip of a coin on that one. Yeah. All right, thank you, Coach, and uh, good luck. Yeah.